Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving. So I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, welcome to this episode of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Today I have with me Bob Stedman from the Tactical Edge Institute. Bob, thank you so much. I'm humbled and honored. I understand you have low production values, but at least the uh, <laughs> pints in a cone would have been nice. Right. Oh, it's a road show. I, I got a water here for you. Um, since I can't hear out of my left ear, is this going to be closed caption? Uh, I think YouTube can make it closed caption. Okay. I don't make it closed caption. I know some people that do uh, podcasts and radio shows, they have people that um, uh, transcribe all their stuff and turn that into a blog post. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to do it. So I'm out for that. That's okay. I've taught the deaf before and I have never learned to do sign language. I just said, don't put the gun this way. <laughs> right. That's about it. Right. All right. So we are in Hendron, Virginia. Herndon. Herndon. Oh, sorry, man. That's okay. That's right. The only We're reason Herndon, I remembered Virginia. it was because Ty Herndon, the country singer. Uh, there we go. There we go. So we're, we're in Herndon, Virginia, and we are driving around Bob Stedman. So Bob is, uh, you're a former police officer. A uh, long time ago. Long time ago. A time ago. A long time, right, another life ago. Horse and um, you've done some uh, some executive protection stuff for people, which yes. is pretty cool. So let's get into it. How, did you did you go, grow up in a, a gun-friendly family? Uh, at that time, nobody really was any kind of, I mean, it was the 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. uh, well, from one of those nice uh, families that divorced early, had a mom, uh, I was a latchkey kid, what we became known as later on, Right. and uh, dad wasn't really into guns, mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I didn't really see him all that much in my youth. Right. Uh, a few of us had... Okay, this is bad with today's stuff going on with all these crazy kids shooting up places. But we had fathers that had guns accessible, but we also were sort of taught common sense and whatever we'd grab one, all we wanted to do was just go out in the hills and shoot. And shoot, right. And shoot some cans or something. We were so bright, we would return it in the same order, <laughs> but not clean it. And so nothing got over on the parents, but. You know, it, it's not like today. I don't believe uh, with all the uh, politicians and stuff saying it's a, a medical thing, and you know, or it's a gun thing. As I, I grew up playing cops and robbers, cowboys, Indians, or in our day, soldier, American versus German. I sat there and had the German soldiers because they had the snappiest uniform. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a fashion order. The only reason I joined the Marine Corps is because their uniform rocked. The other ones looked tacky. <laughs> yeah, it was a different time. I've talked to some people that would, uh, they used to bring like a 22 rifle to school and they'd leave it in the principal's office and on the way home they'd shoot rabbits and squirrels. So it was a completely, completely different time. Well, but I got a, a, I wouldn't say a rude awakening because it really wasn't like I said, different times, so it really didn't register with me. Um, whenever I got out of hand, eventually, whenever I was about 13, my mother shipped me off to an aunt and uncle that I had really never met before. Mm -hmm. They had a ranch in New Mexico, and, and the mom was still young and available, and having me and my brother around were sort of impeding her marital aspirations. So, sure. your dad's going to live with your dad, or with is our father and you get to go to a ranch with people you've never met before mm. uh, like on a bus by myself at 13. wow here's ten dollars <laughs> buy a snickers bar <laughs> for the trip yeah. i would i would never dream of doing that with my kids but i do remember going to 
uh, going to like not even convenience stores, but get, getting money from my grandfather and having him, you know, say go in and get a get a carton of cigarettes. Uh huh. Yep. You, 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 you know, you're a you're a kid. You're seven years old. I need a carton of L and M's, and you know they give you the cigarettes. They give you the change. You walk out. Your grandpa waves out the window, and you get the car and leave. Oh yeah. My mom worked in bars, and whenever she couldn't get a sitter or didn't trust us to stay home. We stayed at the bar and played pool, and while all the drunkies were hanging out, it was just normal thing, and I did the same as you. Go buy my mama, pack of cigarettes, and it was great. But yeah, going yeah. to New Mexico, and then apparently since I had just enough Indian in me, I have no clue, it's probably pinky toe, <laughs> uh, I was eligible to go to the Indian high school, uh, Cibola in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, Cibola. Uh, and that's whenever I started seeing the rifles and uh, guys wouldn't show up and I'd say, uh, why isn't the teacher asking about this whole group of guys that ain't showing up? Right. They go, oh, they're out hunting. They share the meat. <laughs> so, ah. know, I was like dances with the wolves, but academically and a lot earlier. I'm like, <laughs> really? Like, okay. Wow. That's pretty wild. I guess uh, I've talked to some people in Pennsylvania, uh, the, like the first week of hunting season. Like factories and schools and everything shut down, so they go out and go hunting. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Well, I was surprised to find out how most of our products, at least in the 70s, were named after Indians. Winnebago. I mean, <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> right. You got. You call it butter. We call it maize. Um. So how'd you get into shooting? So you you slowly you see these other guys that are out shooting and hunting. You're living with this um. Your, um, your aunt and uncle didn't really hunt didn't really shoot uh, yeah do you, hunt, do you hunt now uh, now uh, not here gotcha. uh, whenever my wife got promoted younger lady academically an overachiever and so she gets promoted about every decade this cool. is the last one I'm not moving anymore I'm tired of being <laughs> a mail order war, war bride <laughs> um, right we got here and the first thing I started Luckily, we had the internet, and instead of going out and actually physically asking people, it's like, where can I go to shoot my guns? I'm thinking, plinking out in the hills or something. Right. Nothing. Everybody owns the land, so wow. you have to go to a shooting range, and that's annoying and expensive. Right. Um, and uh, another reason, and of course, in my mind, whenever she was promoted, mm -hmm. uh, like I was telling you earlier about being promoted to uh, and had the three choices in New Jersey, Chicago, or Texas, mm -hmm. took Texas. Beautiful place, highly suggested. Um, so they said uh, Virginia, her office is in Maryland. I did a fast Google search, looked at it, I said, that's California East. No. <laughs> so when right. I looked at Virginia, it says, oh, hold on, concealed carry, open carry. Right. Gun friendly, even Free though state. democratically mm -hmm. run, but they know their place. Sorry, that's Democrats. <laughs> And, but basically it took me going, uh, moving to that ranch and I had a cousin that was a uh, retired uh, colonel in the Marine Corps. It was actually my mother's cousin, which just was easy for me to say, <laughs> grand cousin, I had no clue how that right. worked. Uh, to say that I am a collector of guns, I probably got less than 20. Uh, he goes, come on, you're gonna help me clean the guns when I, it was a yearly thing with him. Mm -hmm. a yearly Three bedroom day. house. I don't know where they all came from. Right. But he had a crap load of crap load of guns, and I'd help him clean them, and then we'd go out and shoot them. And yeah, that's what led me to join the Marine Corps. Just his stories, three mm -hmm. tours in Nam, and unfortunately, upon his death, of old age, uh, we had to go and. Uh, inventory of his house for probate and whatnot. And mm -hmm. At the time, granted, it was probably 20 years later. At the time, I helped him clean those guns. It wasn't a whole lot of guns that I remember, but we dug up 170 rifles and 200 handguns underneath beds in the attic. And wow! Um, today, of course, they would do a whole SWAT raid right, on that so he's place. Got a whole cache of weapons. Yeah, and I don't know where he kept the ammo. <laughs> it was a ranch. Who knows? Wow. That's pretty wild. But that was it. And then after the Marine Corps, I was like, okay, we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. 
police work and man all I could sit there and tell you about that is I can tell you guys why the hearing impairment that's only coming out now with the NRA sitting there offering benefits and to go and get a hearing aid is whenever I went through the police academy they believed in realism mm. so that meant no eye protection no, no hearing protection. protection yeah and uh, unless you were the range master that was old as dirt and probably started out with J. Edgar Hoover at the FBI, <laughs> uh, who had two bullets sticking in his ear. Oh, uh, right. That was the option. And, uh, yeah, I chose not for that option. And the hearing was okay, but the 80s came along and rock concerts. And between doing that and doing it, it was good executive protection for either rock groups or yeah and then of course teaching on the ranges and stuff Outs outdoors I would not even wear hearing protection and it finally caught up with me wow that's uh so wear your hands yeah that <laughs> stinks I have some earplugs um I spent 10 years playing in a Motown disco funk band and, and at one point like we used to play four nights a week and it just got you know just got tiring what is this guy doing? I have no clue. I thought this guy's a California like a, driver's a Vespa driving He's the on a Vespa direction. in sandals. It's just an accident uh. waiting to happen. <laughs> this oh, is back yeah. in that care, uh, not care guy. Who was it? The uh, Roman Holiday. Right. And, uh, I can't remember. The Gregory Peck. There we go. Um, yeah. So I got. I had some earplugs that were molded to my ears when I used to play in a band. And a lot of times when I when I go out and make the gun crime videos, I don't wear. The big earmuffs. I, I put the earplugs in, and, and I get a, I get a rash of stuff from people that are like, oh, he's in an unsafe. It's, you know, blah, he's not wearing ear protection. And he's only wearing sunglasses, and he's just shooting on the side of the road. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that. I'm in a range. I have ear protection. It's ridiculous, but, but it is what it uh, is. I have, I have people ask me, you know, uh, from the cop perspective about what's going on today and everything, and yeah, was I ever shot at? Did I ever shoot this at? And, you know, shot at several times, once by accident, probably about seven times on purpose. Still wow. here, amazingly. And I said, you know, I never had to fire back. Mm -hmm. I said, the only time I wanted to shoot somebody is what finally killed the left ear is fairly recent, within the last decade. I was teaching a class in California and mm -hmm. had the whole right side of the range blocked off for me and the students. Yeah. And as I'm sitting there, I have side of my can off so I could hear them because even though my hearing was still fairly intact yeah I still had to sort of hear what they were saying and as I was talking I heard somebody come in the door and get behind me I just assumed it was a late student right and I'm talking and it's bad enough that this is the pistol side of the range this idiot with the high-powered rifle was right behind me and decided oh, to start man. popping off rounds and it was like a tsunami in my ear. And wow. That was the only time I really got close to shooting anybody. I wow. Was just like, mm. That's that sucks. But I, that's what happens on ranges. Right. Crappy ranges. <laughs> yeah, I always um the the place that I go to if I'm gonna do any shooting, I always all right, lay eyes and ears, eyes and ears, we've got eyes and ears. Okay, going on. Gonna do some shooting. There's uh there's this old guy, his name is Eddie. And the, the first time I went to go film a gun gram, I played happy birthday and shot an AR-15. And like, I'm like, hey, I just want to make a quick video. And I was in and out before they knew what was happening. The next time I filmed one, he was at the range again. He's like, hey, are you, aren't you that guy that plays the bugle and shoots? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Then like a few days later, I went to make another one. And he was sitting there with some dude. Like literally, it's Monday morning, 9.15. I was gonna do this before I headed into work. And they're, they're sitting at the, you know, sitting on a bench, uh, just hanging out at the range, and, and he's like, you gotta watch this guy, this is pretty funny. <laughs> but it's it's really funny, like, if I am if I go to make a video and I'm there for an extended period of time, he inevitably shows up. And he's he's a way old guy, so he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna wear it. I'm like, I'm gonna go shoot, you wanna put some ears on? No, I'll be fine, all right? Okay, man. Do you have a following? Do you have a fan base? Yeah, I know, it's pretty pretty wild, pretty cool. Trying to grow the writing shotgun fan base. Not as good as that upstarter Air Force, uh, Arizona weapon site. I won't mention his name, but uh, my Twitter account, I'm, I'm at 16 and catching up to you, Dave. <laughs> Mr. Spaulding? 
He's Mr. Dave, Dave Rodriguez. Dave Rodriguez. I don't know this Arizona guy. Arizona Weapons site. I have to check him out. You, you won a, the 22 at the thing you were just at. Well, not, oh, uh, yeah. I just won a gun at the, um, uh, at the Heller, Heller anniversary dinner. Um, I won it from AZ Firearms. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, for some reason I must have connected to no, it. That's okay, they're both so in Arizona. So soon you forget when you... I know, or right? Or just close to the sun. No, so I got this. I got the poster right here. Look at this. I won a 1022 last night at the Dick Heller event from AZ Firearms. So shout out to Cheryl and Danny Todd. <laughs> they're so much fun, man. They're cool. Uh, anyway, so let's um, let's talk about the cop years, being a cop. You got out of the Marines. But there's a lot of guys that seem to go from being a uh, being a marine to being in the uh, or being in the military to yeah. being a police officer sort of an inside joke uh, the only positions you're qualified for out of the marine corps is either cop or male porn uh, <laughs> i didn't have the stature for the male porn there we go although i was ron jeremy stunt double <laughs> because of the hairy back didn't have the enjoyment but, um Oh yeah, there was, uh, it's not just us, several others, but, uh, originally from Southern California and mm -hmm. went to San Diego for boot camp, so I was considered a Hollywood Marine. A I Hollywood Marine. Didn't understand Marine. that, considering I was from Riverside, which is 60 miles from Hollywood. Right. But, again, um, I don't know, got out, sat there, uh, I went in in 10th grade, whenever you can still go on with the parents' consent, and got out, got my GED. Said okay, what now? Uh, tried a few little oddball jobs and yeah. didn't excite me. Uh, so I sat there and mom said, "Well, you know, you got your GI Bill. Might as well go to college and see if there's anything there." And uh, other than the girls, uh, didn't find a whole lot uh, except I finally met the chief of the campus police department and yeah. started talking with him. And they had a program that was. Uh, Basically, he got paid, and he also got credit for criminal justice classes if you're a campus police aide, which is basically a security guard and not a right. police officer. You patrol the lots, right. uh, escort girls at night, uh, you know, minimal stuff, and got into that, liked it, got through uh, the Reserve Academy, mm -hmm. got hired as a campus cop, worked that for uh, roughly three years. And then, of course, being young and just wanting to get in the action, got on the Banning Police Department. It's in a little place that no one really knows about. Uh, we even refer to it as the last peace stop on the way to Palm Springs. <laughs> um, the only famous person we ever met is whenever we pulled over Sylvester Stallone's limousine. Oh, my gosh. And Let's hear about that. <laughs> No, we had no probable cause, and we ran the plate before. Yeah, so you don't <laughs> want to just sit there and pull anybody over. And uh, Mr. Sloan wasn't in there, apparently. Oh, my uh, gosh. But highlight, um, that was about the most exciting for that one. Mm -hmm. um, got on there and uh, had a good time you know, until I finally sat there and was involved in an accident and got medical retired. Mm -hmm. And that led to working in hotels and executive protection but that was a little bit later in between times I sit there and just tried I had several hats I did everything from clean bathrooms to run a street sweeper and for some god awful reason they actually hired me to manage a store a grocery store and I'm like okay fair <laughs> break but right <laughs> um, I, I just seemed to be able to go in and fill out an application say yeah I can do that Sure, I can uh, do that. Sure, I can do that. I was this close to brain surgery, but my hands are shaking. <laughs> that's funny. So, how did you get in the per executive protection? Like, it, that seems to me like a group of um, a group of people that know somebody who knows somebody who knows someone who does it, and that's how you get in on that. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost like being an independent firearms instructor. Uh, yeah, there's really no money in it unless you own a gun range and you have a good area for clientele. Right. Uh, in my infinite wisdom, whenever I picked Virginia, I will, I really didn't think about instructing. Yeah. I said, hold on, I'm 11 miles from the NRA headquarters. Mm. That's where we're living. There and we go. I got here, threw out my shingle, and finally I met some other instructors. You know, Do you know how many of us? There's one on every corner. 
Right. It's like 7-Eleven in Texas. <laughs> and uh, executive protection is pretty much the same thing. Uh, they got niche markets. You know, the ones that do it for Hollywood stars and whatnot. Right. Uh, those are word of mouth and people that know people. Right. Uh, all these guys that go through all this training to become executive protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't harp on them for any reason. I mean, they're trying to, you know, advance their skills and whatnot, but there's really not a big uh, market for it mm -hmm. unless you're already in. It's sort of like um, uh, paramilitary contractors and um, now they call them uh, security contractors. Uh, if right. it's not a war zone. Um, that was a, a big market whenever the early uh, time of the war uh, in Iraq was going on. Mm -hmm. But then as it started petering out, that's how Blackwater finally washed out. Right. Uh, they sat there and started hiring guys with hardly any kind of experience other than saying, hey, I got this certificate. Right. And, uh, but it's just really not a lot of money. I got into it easy enough uh, only through a couple of people that I knew, and they were in the stunt community. Uh, Stunts Unlimited, thumbs Stunts up. Stunts Unlimited, uh, cool. Original, Hal Needham, Smokey and the Bandit. Man started the place. Wow. Um, whenever I was younger, I would sit there and hang out with all of them, and thought of going that way, and until I started breaking enough of my own bones without money, I said, maybe not. <laughs> um, and just word of mouth and uh, did a lot of uh, which is not as glamorous as most people think uh, I cover our protected so to speak a lot of the older stars Dizzy Gillespie uh, that's Roy cool. Orbison that's uh, awesome Freddie Fender even I didn't know who that Freddy was when they said you got to protect Freddie Fender I'm like Clueless, and Freddy then my mom, of course. Oh yeah, he's on that son. I'm like, oh, right. okay. So he's going to bed at nine o'clock at night. I'm right. sitting there. <laughs> it's gonna be an early night. Yeah. Now Dizzy Gillespie, that that guy was a you know fine guy, great. Uh, scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Uh, was, How did he scare you? I was working uh, at a hotel at the time, Hollywood Inn in Ontario, and. Course. Most of you don't know where it's at, but if you look at the original Poltergeist movie at the end, where Craig T. Nelson goes to the hotel, they go in the room, and he ro rolls the TV out onto the balcony. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a hotel. Oh wow! And um, Dizzy was doing his concert there, and he said, "Okay, I need to be woke up at five o'clock," and a whole bunch of other things that I wasn't putting two and two together at the time because we didn't even know what a Muslim was back then. Right. And uh, apparently he had to get up face east to do his prayers or whatever. Came time, I rolled around, knocked on his door. He doesn't answer. And the hotel did not trust us enough to sit there and give us a key to get in <laughs> in case anybody died or needed right. medical attention. Right. And I've tried all the tricks. There's an old cop trick. You can bang on the door all you want, but if you get a coin and just tap on the window, for some reason that sound carries. Not with Dizzy. <laughs> and after about 10 minutes, I'm starting to sweat. Right. And I'm getting close to calling you know, for the fire department to break down the door. Oh my gosh. And uh, he finally answers, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So after that, I was like, can I just sleep with you and wake you up? <laughs> and, but uh, there's been a several. Did you, of them. Did, you, did you shack up with him? No. He wouldn't let you in the hotel room to sleep on the couch? Um, no, this was a hotel that, like I said, uh, he was quite older by that time. Right. And did not rate a five star with, you know, oh, a man. little living room where we usually would sit, or at least the hallway. Right. It was all uh, entrances from the parking lot. And basically, the hotel said you can't sit out there because you're gonna spook people. Oh my so god! I'm in a suit where I look like a well-dressed mugger. <laughs> right. But uh, but yeah, that's where most of the Hollywood people is basically in hotels. Um, there's a movie that nobody remembers, of course, uh, called Sunset with Bruce Willis. Right after he hit big with Die Hard. Die Hard, right? Uh, Mariel Hemingway and James Garner. Mm -hmm. That was about the uh, cowboy Tom. Cow Mix. Right, I was gonna say, uh, isn't that a cowboy movie? What? Wasn't that a cowboy movie? 
Sun, Sunset? Wasn't that a cow, uh, cowboy uh, movie? Sunset. It was. It was about Tom makes the cow the movie, old movie cowboy. Yeah. Tom, uh, not Tom Cruise. Flashback to Tom. Yeah. Um, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Uh, I have no clue what Meryl Hemingway was doing. She must have been just there to be a good looking old girl. <laughs> right. And James Garner played an old, aged, white herb. And uh, it's just about their relationship together. Because White Earp and him built up a, a friendship. And Tom Mix was trying to get White Earp's story pushed through to get a movie made. Jeez. Cut. Nope, we're going to keep that going. <laughs> ah, there that's why we're alive, people. Right? Uh, they tried to get the people in Hollywood interested in the movie. And it didn't happen before White Earp died. And they started making it about two movies about him about 10 years later. Oh, wow. But Bruce was down there in the bar playing his harmonica, doing his Bruno imitations. And, oh, right. I yeah, actually, uh, uh, I, I remember buying a cassette tape when he was, uh, uh, mm -hmm. th that album he did when he was trying to be a, trying to be a rock star, I guess. Yeah, he, he was a, that's, I mean, I'm sure he still is great, but that's whenever he first broke big and he still hung out with the minions, the people. <laughs> James Garner was a great stand-up guy, very calm, very, basically just walking up to his bedroom and conversing in the elevator, and, you know, that just was it, generalities. Huh? And Meryl Hemingway, I have no clue if she was even there. We never saw her. Right. And at least I was not her detail. Well, that's a guy. I didn't think she was that great anyway. <laughs> Crazy, man. That's pretty wild. That is pretty wild. Yeah. So well, how long have you... Uh, I, I'm an instructor. I, I only teach classes in Massachusetts. Um, how long have you been an instructor? Uh, top end, 20 at a time. Um, I started Tactical Edge Institute in Texas in 2000, whenever I got my NRA certification. Mm -hmm. and it was Texas, and a lot of people just go out in their backyard and shoot, so they didn't really need basic instruction. It was just the ones that wanted to step up their game. Sure. And now it's what the instructors, like law enforcement instructors do. Is in my day, I don't know how it is today in academies. In my day, that's pretty much all you did in the academy is you stood there and just shot at a target. Right. As you hit the black, you graduated. Yeah. Uh, to where now you got simulators and you know, See, a bunch of other good stuff. stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I had a few people uh, doing it there. And then when, of course, we moved uh, back to, moved to Virginia, hippie Hollywood, oh. uh, or Northern California, <laughs> uh, or as I call the northern part of hell, uh, and, uh, the customer base wasn't there. Like I said, unless you had owned a uh, gun Under range. range right. And even then, you know, you go into the gun range, you put your money down, rent a gun, or bring your own, pay the, you just go out and clink off. and. That's sort of scary. I mean, it's not so bad whenever you actually have people that know what they're doing and right. teach, say, like their girlfriend or their children. Mm -hmm. uh, but as an instructor, I'm sure you've probably seen out on the range where you get some idiot out there with his girlfriend trying to, trying to teach her how. Her. Yeah. Then that's why you I, get the YouTubes going, funniest <laughs> gun videos ever. <laughs> right. I had a guy one time, I went to take a student out, and it was this... Um, this woman took a class with me and then she wanted to do live firing afterwards and she wanted to bring her um, she wanted to bring her boyfriend or maybe she brought her daughters and her daughter's boyfriend and her daughter's boyfriend thought he knew something right thought he'd be cool so what I, what I ended up doing was what Jerry Michalek does because he's like yeah I mean he shot okay and he knew I guess he'd gone shooting a few times before so he was trying to play it off that uh, he knew what he was doing and you know he was better at me at, at doing my deal so I'm, my attitude is it's it's my gun and it's my ammo and we're at the range that I belong to and you're my guest, you're not going to show me up. So what I did is I said, hey, well, check this out. I held the gun. Um, I had a double action 357 revolver. I held it up. I shot it upside down with my pinky and uh, and I got, I got all the shots on target and he's like, oh, all right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you, you can't play with me like this. Don't do this. You can't show me up in my range with my guns and my ammo. Don't even think about it. 
yeah well, once we got here like i said once i found out there's one of me on every block plus with the the hearing almost shot or pretty much close yeah uh i just cut it down to maybe three people tops that way if there's questions right you can answer there and actually them. address them instead of trying to handle 20 people on them keep going huh what right or my wife sit there and said she would come out and help me by throwing stuff at me when somebody's asking a question. <laughs> and I said, no, I'll just cut it down to three. It's what I never heard this phrase until I came here. And I went to my beloved NRA and said, hey, listen, I'm retired. Do you guys need any help? Right. Sign up. I'll sign an application for the gun ranch. I'm taking a score. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll lend a few extra bucks and maybe get free range time. Right. Uh, it's 10 bucks an hour. And it was only like three hours at their whim. Mm. It was like, hold on, I, I sort of need to know because I got to right. do other stuff. Got to plan around your own life, yeah. I, you know, I'd like to, to sit there and you know, be a job where I don't have to work at another job. Because, yes, even though I'm retired, I have expensive hobbies called guns. <laughs> right. And uh, so I need to pick up a few extra bucks. And the lady, I don't remember her name, I don't think she's there anymore. She goes, well, this is a hobby job. Job. Excuse me? <laughs> a hobby job. I have no clue what you're talking about. Right. How old are you? <laughs> right. And, uh, I didn't really ask her that, but I said, okay, sorry, I can't do it. I can't Got do home. That. My wife is much younger. I said, you won't believe what this is. So she said, this is a hobby job. Oh, yeah, that's it. I said, you're younger than <laughs> me. You, you've been in the business. You know, right. you should sit there and tell me the new term the terminal. Right. The terminology. <laughs> The new lingo. Uh, I also can't speak all that well. <laughs> but yeah, I sit there and just keep it to a few. And yeah, uh, even though I do sort of like you do, I cut down on cost and instead of going and paying a range, which also <laughs> my beloved NRA sort of, if anybody else is actually an employee of the NRA, my name's not Bob, it's Geraldo. <laughs> um, but they no bit, longer though. let us certified instructors use our certification uh, ID uh, to get somebody through a class without it being an exact NRA class. Right. Which, out here in Virginia, you don't need that. All you have to do is go online, pay like 20 bucks for, right. for the concealed carry uh, permit. Gun safety thing. And you can get a concealed weapons permit. And. The NRA finally jumped on board with the whole online thing, but it wasn't that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they expected these people to pretty much do all the academics online and then come to us and look for, for gun instruction. Yeah. And the cost of it, nobody was going to do it. And that's how I cut down on the side one. I don't use my ID, obviously. Right. So I just put it under the uh, Tactical Edge Institute. I'm also a registered instructor, an instructor with usacarry.com. Oh, cool. And uh, I just use that as my ID number. And I meet them at their house and we'll go over the academics, you know, gun safety, cover that. And then it, we'll set up a day to go to the range. That way we all go. Like I said, we're all friends. Yeah. I'm not an instructor to the range, so they can't sit there and say, you got to do that with the class and pay us. Right, just taking some French here. Yep, I just said, no, I'm just a buddy here, help it out. And um, my my price is very limited. Hooters for the after scoring. <laughs> and, uh, you know, pitchers of beer and buffalo wings for Bob and we're covered. <laughs> I right. supply everything but the ammo and the range time. Very cool. Now, see, when, when in Massachusetts, when the NRA made that change, the, they... The Mass State Police said you could, you would, you can accept the basic pistol class because a lot of people want to do that so they can do some shooting, which is cool. They, the NRA changed the basic pistol class so it's online. Mass State Police said, yeah, we're not going to take the online class. So that's when I was like, let's just do four hours of home firearm safety, rifles and shotguns and handguns. Oh my, no live firing. If you want to go live firing, you you get a gun. I'll steer you. I'll tell you. I'll guide you. I'll, you know give you as much information as, as I, I can about what kind of gun would work for you and what you need it for and all that sort of stuff and then we can go shooting with your gun yeah. because if if I go through you know 
if, if you go through taking apart a 1911 and then you take apart uh, take apart a Glock and you take apart something else, take apart something else, it's just it's information overload, you know. Yeah. So, um, so what I do is I do the NR, uh, the home firearm safety class, and if somebody wants to go shooting, we'll go shooting afterwards. We'll set that up another time, maybe do it with their gun after they get a gun. Um, and then the NRA, I don't know, I guess they're back to trying to do the whole basic pistol class where you can, it's eight hours long, you don't have to do it online, you can do it in person. And I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's just a hassle. I know some guys that have, you know, cut out of doing basic pistol. Or they'll they'll do like the home fire and safety class and then take people to the range and uh, get a couple hours of range time in. Well, that's what blew me away was uh, whenever I came here, uh, whenever I was in Cal moved back to Northern California after being in Texas for ten years. When I retired as a cop from Southern California, I had a concealed weapons permit issued by my department. Right. I was in Texas. I lived in laps. I never thought I would go back to the hell that is California. And. Uh, Whatever I did, it was in, like I said, hippie heaven, Northern California. Mm -hmm. I went to the local sheriff, our police department, applied for it, or said, I want to apply for it. And the chief said, You're not going to get it. I said, um, I'm a retired cop and I had one. I said, Well, well, I don't issue them to anybody unless they're department personnel. Wow. So I goes, Try the sheriff. I went to the sheriff and got about as far as the sergeant, mm -hmm. and he goes, about because you were in Southern California and that was a decade ago. You know, uh, no, any okay. threat you might think you'll be under it was probably non existent. Wow. Only to be found out that the city I was living in, the Hells Angels, sat there and partied at a bar right up the street from where I live. Oh, and let's just say um, we had some issues in Southern California when I was on the department with them. Not that they were going to kill me or anything, but still, right. it's like I, I didn't understand why so they wouldn't give a brother officer. Right. I could sell weapons for a minute until I met a couple of other local guys that have retired and their chiefs wouldn't let them have one whenever they left. Wow. And then again, it's also California where the, uh, well, no, I can't remember what his title was, the, uh, some Yendon Lee, and he was a big... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's in jail now. He was um, a big yeah. anti-gun politician that was uh, selling guns illegally. Yeah, that got busted for running guns. Yeah. Um... He sat there and was going to make a, or try to make a law to where all the officers that bought their own off-duty weapons that when they were on duty or on the job mm -hmm. that had more than ten round magazine, they had to turn in the magazines. And the magazine course, ban is ridiculous. Yeah, I was like, that went over like a fart in a diving helmet and never happened. <laughs> uh, but. Whenever I came here and I seen how lax it was, even I couldn't agree with that. But yeah, you well, know, that's I, I did not understand how the NRA let that float since they believe in you know gun safety, this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. to where there was no pushback about just letting anybody have one. Right. And you and me talked about that. The Yahoos that walk around with an AR-15 on their back, going through Walmart shopping for toilet paper. More right. Much. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm in the camp that kind of thinks that you know, I, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly. You know, and it kind of makes uh, it it really does make everybody look bad. Yeah. Um, all well, the gun owners. It's like I said. Whenever I talk to the young guys at open carry and stuff, and I just explained to them, I was like, you don't understand. I said a cop is trained and that was our worst fear and it happened is they're having their guns taken from them and used against them right and i said well you're not even gonna hear the bad guy coming i mm. uh, said so he's gonna get a free gun and we're either gonna get hurt or dead right um, but they still you know i've got the uh thigh rig with the oh my gosh uh, type yeah. three tactical doogity to lock everything in and well, what do you guys say old leather thumb snap <laughs> I was like you know even I don't trust myself with just the in and out holster with no right. kind of safety strap I, yeah I'm old and depending on how many beers I could be shaky <laughs> no 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 and a matter of fact the, a guy was actually I can't remember where it was it was right after we got here and I heard about that now I was telling my wife just what I said so that's the stupidest thing I've ever some guy was somewhere and basically he had a brand new gun that he just bought and doing a second amendment right and open carrying somewhere and yeah some guy came up from behind and go thanks for the free gun 
Wow. So I was like, yeah, I always tell people if you're going to open carry, you need to uh, you need to have some sort of retention device on the holster. Um, and I, it's it, this is what's I call it welcome to the Commonwealth stuff. In Massachusetts, open carry is legal, but no one does it because people will freak out. Yeah, that's so. Well, why make the popular? populist and jittery. I mean, yeah. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Right. And plus, being an old fart, you know, I don't want the bad guys knowing I got no, something you gotta to go. It's, it's time to go. Right. The last thing you have is the element of surprise. That, yeah, it's a... Uh, like I said, I, I believe in... Like, the thing that cracks me up is um, um, it's sort of leveled out now in all the magazines and stuff, but uh, whenever I first started reading the different thing and the places that had concealed carry mm -hmm. it was like how not to how not to wear your clothes where your weapon prints oh right you know because that can get attention from the police I was like um I would be worried more about attention from the guys that want to take a gun right and uh, uh, I've had a couple of conversations with uh the second amendment self-appointed authorities uh, about uh oh well if you print then you can be arrested because they considered it your so, yeah, it's open you carrying brandishing a firearm and they're, yeah, they I feel threatened in fact you have a gun yeah I said okay well answer me this uh, if you have a concealed weapons permit but your city allows open carry yeah and you have a shirt on and okay you know, the wind blows back on. shows a gun yeah now that gun's open carry wind goes bye bye shirt goes back concealed it X's out each other right you yeah. should be covered yeah, and of course I've talked the Herndon PD, Herndon Police. If you're watching, trust me. <laughs> great, great young man. I've had several incidents, not bad incidents, but uh, my wife when we first closed the house, we were still me and the kids are still in California, mm -hmm. packing up stuff. The wife came, closed it. She just had to spend one night in her brand new home by herself. Mm -hmm. Went upstairs, put out an air mattress, got ready to settle down for the night. And I, and I think it was roughly about 12, 1 o'clock here in the East Coast. And it was, I forgot what time it was. It was late in California. I get a phone call. She, Somebody's breaking into the house. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you um, want me to do? Okay, thanks for the update. Did you call the police? Right. Yeah, I did. And it got routed because we still have our old area codes. Got routed and finally got to Herndon. Yeah. Um, they were here, Johnny on the spot, five minutes. Cool. Uh, not even five minutes from the time my wife called. Come in, some idiot, grown him. We call him a kid, but he's like 30 something years old. Yeah. Lives up the street, little um, wasted pieces of breath. Uh, got drunk up. His parents wouldn't even let him in to the house. Oh my gosh. And uh, I guess he's seen the sign for cell sign uh, in front of our house. I thought it was, thought it was so I broke into the basement <laughs> window. Got about as far as the shelf holding the laundry equipment before that collapsed and his drunk ass did a oh pass over tea kill and pass out in the on the floor. <laughs> and uh, so they came out and uh, took him away. And a few months later, which is I've never heard or seen or have done mm -hmm. an officer shows up and says I'm here to discuss the case against that and what you're gonna have to do I'm like, damn you guys got like the full on you know victim support wow. <laughs> and uh and then the other time was whenever that little Irish bar we just passed I yeah. was sitting there telling my wife damn it you're a potato eating Irish woman why don't I meet you down there if you get off work I'll have some drinks and have some food Okay, I know you're from Massachusetts. Big Irish people out there. <laughs> right. And you know, never to ask Irish people in a pub, hey, listen, there's two lines out there, and I'm not sure if that's a parking space or not. <laughs> oh, it's a parking space. Don't worry about it. Don't ask me. Scotch Irish. Okay. I barely set down my beer. I was yeah. sitting in the window so I could see when my wife came. Mm -hmm. And I caught the reflection of the nice old shit lights. Bounce. Oh, cut that <laughs> one for editing. Bad language. Lights are bouncing off. Right. And right there, I already knew. I just said, uh, don't touch, touch my beer. Thank oh you, my guys. Gosh. What's that? Went outside. Young officer there looking at my car. <laughs> Hold the phone. 
I said, I know. What's that, Nana? He goes, can I see your license? Of course. I said, listen, I'm carrying a weapon. Do you want to see my conceal? No. Wow. Okay. I mean, we have no duty to sit there and right, tell, him, have man, to tell him, but as a retired cop, <laughs> I'd like to know. Sure. And uh, we just looked at it. I said, ram the license plate, made sure I didn't have any tickets. I just said, Mr. Stubman, I'm not here to bust anybody's balls and give out tickets. You know, just move it up around the corner there. There's a lot. Yeah. Give me a hug, youngster. <laughs> I was like, and every every kind of incident and stuff that I've ever been involved with has been positive. Uh, the only, <laughs> it's not a, an exception. It's just an interesting story. I was sitting in my front room mm -hmm. watching TV, and my daughter comes running in. Daddy, daddy. There's a whole bunch of policemen running down the street coming this way with rifles like yours, ARs. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, that, that yeah. old gunman actually did sit there and get pissed off with that last tweet I made. <laughs> and uh, we had a house that was closed, it was foreclosed on. Apparently, somebody reported people in the house, and apparently... They figured that they had to deploy the rifles for that. Oh it was a bunch gosh. of kids, but still, I'm like, okay, you guys don't get to use those too much, do you? <laughs> well, if right. you go over here and go right, excited. if you go over here and go right, we can see the super CIA building that everybody knows about. <laughs> and where Bob got stopped one Sunday because I just said, there's nobody in the parking lot and that security gate's open. <laughs> Why not? Well, it's, it's America. Right, it's a free country. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I got about 25 yards in the lot before two spook cars came down and grabbed my ass. Wow. What are you doing here? <laughs> uh, I was actually just wondering where the hell you guys are up. <laughs> I just hang it right back right here. All right. And uh, they come around here, and that's another reason I I had my suspicion it was a CIA site because I had read up that it, Langley, nobody really works there except for the analyst. All the other people work in all these nice little buildings that have no names on them, but everybody knows about. <laughs> right. And uh, whenever they stopped me, I looked at the sign on the car and just had a badge that said United States Police. I'm like, okay, I know all your guys' alphabets, and I've never heard that one. <laughs> right. And uh, neighbor up the street works for the government. I can't say at what level, but he started laughing his ass off and he's like yeah that's them he goes they don't have a lot of stuff to do but drive around in a circle <laughs> so like what we're doing but right actually if it's not too busy we'll see how much uh wables mr charlie has yeah none well and get stopped right here yeah. right here yep Woo. that's okay you missed that guy don't worry i know that. that's all right i'm pretty sure he's not even a legal Anyway, there it is. It. Yeah, that's right in front of us. You never know it unless you were in the security business and knew whatever. Yeah, just straight to your right. You sit there and can pick out all the little uh, cameras and concertina wire in like, certain areas. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pretty wild. We can't drive in there, can we? I'm sorry? We can't drive in there, can we? Uh, I would say if it's Sunday, we could, and we could probably get, uh, you know, well, they don't get pissy at you. Yeah. But uh, about a year later, I seen uh, one of them in a 7-Eleven grabbing a burrito. And I just went up and I said, you know, I noticed from your badge and stuff on your car, I've never heard of that alphabet before. Right. And I know most of them. I'm retired and blah, blah, blah. Take a left. Uh, yeah. And I said, uh, you know, but now I know, you know, you guys are the CIA building up there and everything. Uh, I said, aren't you? And that guy just stone faces and says, I can't comment. <laughs> okay, that just pretty much told me, but. <laughs> right. I said, you could have just said, you know, you work for the post office or something. Right. At the light, turn right. At the light, okay. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun living around here and finding out, especially whenever we have a politician, I'm sure it's a Democrat. Um, that swoops in here in a nice black helicopter right. uh, to wherever his house is. Uh, I live in a normal neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, if you go up the road, you see where the politicians and the rich folk live. Nice. And uh, But every now and again, you'll sit there and uh, always on a the weekend whenever they come home and 
so I, I guess they get the buzz close to the houses too or they like to just do it to show off but <laughs> I was like but then again there was that time with the Blackhawk that was interesting again I was thinking that last thing I posted <laughs> they're pissed at me <laughs> especially the they're Obama watching yeah. oh my god too funny too funny well I was telling Chuckles here whenever I tried to call him give him some instructions on how to get to my house the number he gave me said that it would ring through to my phone it says my phone cannot make that call from here or from it, uh, I'm thinking, I make calls all the time. Right. What's wrong with my phone? So I had to pay them for a Democratic operative. Oh, right. But Hard to since believe. it was my phone, I figured, okay, it's the government. Maybe they just have him. <laughs> I had to tell my wife, I hear clucks all the time. She goes, that's you chewing, dear. <laughs> I love the woman, but she's sick. So, you know, if you like what you see... There you go. Go to Tactical Ed Institute. <laughs> Facebook. All right. Yeah. So you, you got to, uh, people can find you on, uh, I know you got a Facebook page, Tactical. Yeah. Well, okay. They're blocking everything. Mm, hang on right. Take a right. All right. Yeah. may go to some rich person's house or another street. Or, yeah, we're uh, going to a nice house. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks <laughs> so like we can turn around right. and go right and take another street over. Holy moly. Uh, yeah. The... All right. It's the, runner down. Yeah. Let's back These out. These are the people that are well off more than I am. <laughs> right. They got a nice house in the nice neighborhood. Oh, hell, you're good. You could actually back all the way down this street. I drive Ooh. in the grass because I don't really care. Uh, yeah. These are people that pay that. a lot of money for the house, but then put down blacktop for a road. Yeah, go figure. I spent a... Um, That's just trash drugs. Uh, I spent a couple summers driving a UPS truck. Yeah, it started out as a it started out as a business page um, for classes and stuff. But yeah, then, you know, I left Texas, moved to California. Yep, and moved here, and it went from um, being a professional, a professional page uh, to basically a free for all. Uh, so it's there may it's mostly political humor, uh, gun stuff. Uh, some stuff from Mr. Bugle over here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but other than that, it's really nothing as far as training or anything. It's just for anybody that likes the page to throw in fun stuff they want. It's totally open. Uh, keep the pornography to a slight minimum. Uh, <laughs> send no that, haters. Send that in a private message. <laughs> <laughs> no haters. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Bob. We're almost at your place. Said we'll get the uh, the Stedman, uh, Shea Stedman, and um, I'm gonna drop you off. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Always Thank a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, next time you're in town, hopefully I won't be working at another secret site that everybody knows about, and uh, <laughs> you can crash at our pad. Oh, that'd be cool. Straight. One more down to the right. All right. To where the poor folk live. The poor folk live. Dude, the poor folk live where yeah. I live. They call it middle class poor folk now, so. Right. And this is it. There we go. See, the, no, we, we came in the way I didn't. We came in the way I didn't. Wait. Yeah, this is what I'm not used to, is actually having a street with kids to play on it. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, it's been so many decades since I've seen that, I've almost taken out three or four of the kids on the block. Yeah, no kidding. And you got a cul-de-sac here, so that's cool, too. So there's not a lot of traffic. Kids can feel safe playing out there. All right. Well, listen. Here we are. We're going to get a picture of you with your license plate. All right, sir. Cool? Well, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Tactical Edge Institute is where you can find Bob Stedman. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and share all the writing shotgun with Charlie stuff. Check out the, the YouTube page, which is where you're seeing this. Um, if you're just listening on the podcast, you need to check out the Facebook page. Or sorry, the YouTube channel. Did I say YouTube channel? I don't know. I'm on YouTube and Facebook and on uh, on the Twitter. So also, you need to check out the Self-Defense Radio Network. They've got a Facebook page. Their website is selfdefenseradio.net, I think is what it is. And uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot, Bob. Yeah. Oh, and for any kind of oddball questions, I actually do have a business email. Stedman at teiusa.org. All right, we'll include yeah. that too. You can send interesting stuff, but yeah, no spam. <laughs> no spam. All right, All right with that, we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Riding Shotgun with Charlie. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.
is Cheryl Todd of Gun Freedom Radio. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd, reminding you that we and the show you're watching are proud members of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Find out more and check out all of the great shows and content at selfdefenseradio.net.